people that he was the most famous guitarist in the world at that time. And they they were the biggest band in the world at that time. Eddie mentioned playing Fair Warning for your dad at the house. Do you remember that at all? I remember a couple times they were playing some music. The record that was most recent that he was working on at that time was Diver Down. Okay. And uh, But I know that I had played stuff uh, from Fair Warning for my dad, and so there was probably a, a couple of tracks that – um, I had mentioned to my dad, and they uh, I'm sure they, they would have listened to Mean Street because that uh, – my dad, I think, is the one that is credited as the, uh, the person who, who said Edward Van Halen reinvented the electric guitar. Yep. I think that was first a, a quote from him in an interview. Um, but, you know, they talked about it, different things, uh, different – songs, different kinds of music. And, and I think the thing was at that time, it was very clear that Ed was at the height of his creative power in what he was doing, but he didn't have anything that he could hear as another guitarist that was influencing him in a, in a way, you know, like guitar music wasn't a thing that was really influencing him. He was looking for other Thanks. Maybe the only guitarist that was inspiring to him who was on a different level was Alan Holdsworth. Yeah. And around that same time, he was working with Alan uh, as well. So that was uh, well, an, Ed, another Ed, thing. Eddie wrote a lot of uh, Fair Warning on piano too at home. Had you heard that? That I did not hear. So it would be interesting to to know what translated from the piano. I mean, I can hear possibly like uh, Sunday afternoon in the park and... Well, I, I mean, I started out playing piano. Uh-huh. You know, I get, uh, I've been writing... Actually, it's not Japper songs. Um, it's on Fair Warning I wrote on piano. Like uh, Unchained, uh, Hear About It Later, what else? I don't know, there were these two or three songs that are... Like, Mean Street was Voodoo Queen and the demos, and they had brought that back. And, right, and a but lot the, of the stuff. intro, though, that's yeah. the most unique thing. I mean, still, hands down, if you hear that and, and you've never seen what it is and you just listen to it, you can't even picture how that's coming out of the guitar or, like, what's even happening there. Yep. Uh, so the rhythmic pattern, the harmonics... How he came up with that, that would be the, the thing to, you know, that I wish there was a way to just, you know, because the thing is, I know that when he liked something, when he thought something was cool, he was just like anybody else. He would rewind the tape and go, check this out. This part is so cool. Check this out. And so that same kind of thing, that enthusiasm was always there. But when he was writing that, he probably was thinking, this is the coolest thing ever. And he's like, <laughs> record it and listen, play it some more. I mean, I'm sure he had to have been thrilled with what that was because how could you not as a guitar player? I mean, it, it's just, it's it's amazing. And I, I actually heard something um, on a, a live concert they did in 1981. It's from Greensboro, North Carolina, I've never heard it on any other version of Mean Street, but he starts doing this extra, when he's doing the tapping pattern, the rhythm pattern at the beginning, he adds another part to it in the live solo that I've never heard anywhere else, and it never made an appearance on a record, but it's one of the coolest things that ever happened. Again, it's like it's he took that idea even further, and it's this weird little descending part of that tapping thing and if you you can find it on the internet but yeah. i heard it and it was like it really spoke to me because it's really hearing uh the advancement of that thing in a way that he never did beyond that seeing that also in the live videos of all these concerts that have emerged which is amazing yeah. it's awesome to see and that's what people look for you know you're not listening for this great audio on those things but you want to hear for different little Techniques he might have used in a certain part, if they played something different. Or, or... the spontaneous stuff. Yeah, because, exactly. Because I know from talking with, with Ed about uh, his own playing over the years, is he would say, and you can even hear him talk about it in interviews, is that sometimes he would do things that were spontaneous that would trigger something in him where he was like, wow, I don't think I could ever do that again. That's just that thing that happened right then and there. And he... Like any musician that is tuned in to what's happening right in the moment, 
that is the thing that you you live for. Like to have something happen that could only happen in a singular moment and an audience that could see that, that's unique to them. It's that special thing that just, it can't be recreated recreated because it just, it, it's that one time and place. And my dad was the same with improvisational solos. That's what he loved was to, just to have the ability to spontaneously compose and make something happen that is unique to that moment in time and will never happen again. But it's interesting to, to find those little things in some of those live performances where he'll play a lick that you never hear on a record, but it's right there. He does, he throws something in yeah. and it's always a surprise element and it's, it's amazing. 